Welcome to another edition of the Sim Racing Garage. I'm Barry Rowland. In this episode, we will be reviewing the SRP GT Edition pedal set from Sim Racing Pro. With a clean looking layout and sporting a complete pneumatic cylinder set for resistance and damping. Distinctive gold anodized pedal faces that have yet to show any signs of wear after a few hours of heel and toe driving. Time to put it through the SRG's review process and see how they do. So, let's get to it. So let's take a closer look at these SRP GT Edition pedals. Now, this is a three pedal set, obviously, but they also make a GT Edition that has a clutch delete. In other words, you can get it in just a two pedal design, which moves the brake pedal over to close to where the clutch is. Not quite all the way over, but close to where it is. Because we have another set of holes down here that the brake front can move over to. And then on the back here, we have another set of holes. So they're doing these base plates all the same, apparently. Let's see if I can get you. There they are. See them right through here. And this allows you to bring this the bracket on the back of this brake pedal over there and mount it. All the holes are tapped and ready to go, so easy thing to do. You cannot take the clutch pedal and move it over here unless you drill your own holes and tap them. It just doesn't have the, the way to do that. So be advised of that, because I know some people like to move their clutch pedal to the middle and use the brake pedal over here in place of the clutch, but still use the clutch for something if they need to. Right. They also have an F1 set which seems to me to be the exact same thing as far as where the brake pedal goes and the clutch obviously gets deleted, but they have different faces on them and they might have something different set up as far as the brake pedal resistance, I would think, but maybe not. So yeah, very clean looking stuff though. As you can see, these gold anodized pedal faces here, they're doing a really good job as far as holding up under me using them. I've been using these for a bit now and I can't see anywhere anywhere on these pedals. And I haven't been taking it easy on these pedals. As you guys probably know, that's not what I do here at the SRG. I try to put them under some pressure every chance I get. So again, very clean set of pedals, a lot of adjustability, and we'll get to that adjustability in the next segment. And yeah, just awesome looking. <laughs> now we have pneumatic cylinders on these, and we have pressure sensors on each, I'm out of here, on each one of these pedals, and that's how we gauge where the pedal is when we're using it. So yeah, this is a... Uh, you know, a lot of people are going to pneumatics. I've been seeing a few of these pneumatic systems coming out now. The only thing is wear and tear on pneumatics. How, how's that going to go? And according to their website, they have stainless steel sleeves here on all of their... Uh, apparently, they've spec these out to the manufacturer the way they wanted them built. So stainless steel tubes or sleeves. And inside of those, they have an MBR seals that are supposed to be rated at like 3.5 million kilometers of travel use. <laughs> So that's a lot of pressing on the pedals, I imagine, to get to that point. So it seems that they've been specced out properly. The pressure sensors themselves are also built for SRP. They, they don't have any branding on them anywhere. In fact, I'll show you one of those up close. So they're giving their own specifications for what they want on the pressure sensors or switches, whatever you want to call them. See right there. And of course, they also have the same thing going on on the pneumatic cylinders themselves. So, yeah, they're specking everything out to whoever builds these and to their own specifications. I, I like the, when a company can do that because they know as far as where the geometry is on a pedal, what the best way to build one would be. And I'm sure they've been through a lot of trial and error to get this right. Now, this is a nice mechanism here. It's very well built up front here. It's just a beefy system. There's no flex in this at, is, at all. When I'm using it, it's very solid under the foot. And you can see that because we're using these huge aluminum brackets here. They're very smooth as far as when you push on them. They have bronze bushings in there, and I might take one of these apart to show you that, but you can see these bronze bushings in there. See the gold in there, each side of that? It's very, very washed out in my lights, apparently. <laughs> but yeah, you can see the gold in there, I think. And so it's very smooth, all the motion here on all these pedals. And again, they have a pivot point in the back also to keep that smooth. And we have a nice looking rod end on the front. Not a cheapy looking one, it's nice and smooth finish on it, so a good looking rod end up here. But we'll get to a closer look at that stuff when we're doing adjustments, and I'll take one of these apart apparently. We also have a USB piece in here, a little housing there. And if you go to their site, you can actually see the board that's in here. You know, I might take this off and take a peek in there, but it's just gonna be an electronics board, obviously. and. Yeah, it has a light system on it. 
that these lights will light up and tell you red or blue or green on the condition of each one of these pedals or the circuitry other than the pedals like brake regulator inside of here. And this has a USB-C connector in it, which I really like. I know it's the little things like that that impress me sometimes <laughs> because, you know, I'm still getting stuff that has uh, USB micro and USB mini, even USB mini. I mean, who uses that anymore? So, I mean, micro is one thing, but yeah, everybody should be using C now, I think. And it gives, they give you a cable here that's a C cable, right? We'll look at that in a second, a little closer. So again, presentation very good here. I'll do a layout under here. Look at all these holes they have in here. Right, so all this is well machined, obviously, and of course all these threads, except for a few holes, these two here and this one here is not tapped, and these side ones where we mount them are not tapped. But everything else is tapped so you can move when you need to, the pedals in the configuration they're in. And on these pieces here, these screws don't go all the way through, the ones up front here, and I was looking at that just to make sure what I was seeing there. So some of these holes don't go all the way through, on the front, so that could be a mounting point if you want to use that. They look like they're M8s, definitely M8 size. And yeah, you don't see them on the front here. See, you can't see all those right in here. So you could use those to mount also. This is a heavy set of pedals, I think. I mean, 18 pounds is heavy to me. And of course, that's because of the base plate and everything mounted to it. That comes out to about 8.1, almost you know, a little over eight kilos for everybody else in the world. So a good solid piece of kit out of the box. That's the, the impression that I get when I pull it out and everything is working smoothly. Uh, we have this big, <laughs> we have this big thing around the clutch mechanism and there's actually a magnet in here, two magnets that come in and as you push this clutch pedal down, they kind of grab the pedal a little bit. Not a lot. I mean, as soon as you let off it go, it, you know, it pops back out. But that's just kind of simulating the spring plate or the pressure plate spring in the pressure plate. So when we push it down and you kind of push past it, it kind of e it's easy to hold the clutch pedal, but then when you let off, it kicks back at you. That's the kind of same kind of feeling you get on this. So there is some of that clutch mechanism built into this assembly. So they did design that into it. But as I find with all of these type of systems, when I'm doing heel and toe shifting at speed, and yeah, focusing on what I'm doing and going fast, you really this kind of stuff kind of goes away. It fades away. You really don't even notice it because you're basically just stabbing that thing like that. So you really don't notice, oh yeah, see how it releases? <laughs> so, and that's not just this, this set of pedals, it's about every set of pedals that I've ever had that had some kind of a clutch mechanism built into it. Yeah, once you're under pressure and you're trying to shift fast, that, you don't even feel that anymore, it just goes away, you're just stabbing at it. But it's nice to have it when you're sitting there going, yeah, that feels good, man, it feels just like I'm pressing down on a clutch. Not the best one I've ever had in the SRG as far as that goes, but you know, it gets the job done. Anything else I want to talk about here? I think that's it. Yeah, so what we'll do is, oh, wait a minute. I guess I want to show you what comes in it, huh? First off, it comes with one of these. Sign of the times, fellas. This is an SRP official face mask, anti-COVID infection mask. And it's kind of microfiberish kind of feel to it. Anyway, it's got a little loop here that are elastic. So they're thinking about our health when they're sending out the pedal sets. Pretty nice. <laughs> I was not expecting that. It's the last thing I expected. Again, the USB cable, USB-A, of course, on one side, and we have the USB-C on this side. Again, I wish more manufacturers were doing this. I mean, there's no reason not to, I don't think. A lot easier when you're plugging things in and have to get in there and see which way, make sure you got it oriented the right way up. I mean, it's doable, obviously, but so much easier when you do it with this. We also get some tools. I got a 10 mil. Let's dump these out of the bag. We got a 10 mil and a 13 mil box in wrenches and these are pretty nice units i mean it's not like the cheap you know satin finished stuff that you get from china I, I would actually like to have this wrench in my toolbox i would actually use this so we also get some allen keys which are the generic looking allen keys <laughs> and again i usually keep these around because i like to cut them off and use them for tight access spaces so we get a i believe this is a five four and a two two and a half and that's for the, the pedal faces but we'll see that as we're moving along, we also get this. This is a spring, and it's the light spring. I've already put the heavy spring in. It actually comes with a heavy spring in the back. And that's the, usually the first thing I do is go to the heavier stuff. And again, if you want something lighter, though, you can use this one. But the heavier spring does make a difference when we're 
pushing down on this pedal and, and hitting our brakes. And of course, there's other adjustments that we can do here to make it easier or harder to push. Anything else I want to talk about? I think that's about it, except for our fantastic manual we get here. Look at this. It's got the little ribs on it here for the binder. And it's got some good information in it. It's got very accurate templates in here for how this thing is built. Let's go. In fact, I was looking at this as I was measuring it to see how accurate this was on this piece. And every one of these numbers is dead on. And the reason I'm pointing that out is because a lot of things I get, I, I read what the dimensions are, and then I go and measure them with my you know, machinist uh, rulers and things like that, and it's off a little bit. But these, these are dead on, which is, yeah, this is little things like that I like because they're, they're doing what they, sh they need to be doing. And we also have, where's the actual, there it is, the diagram of the tr pedal tray here. All the numbers and measurements on here are dead on also, just like it came out of the CAD uh, software. So yeah, this gives you a lot of good information. Uh, the main thing you're gonna be concerned about, of course, for mounting is gonna be the spacing on these slots and holes here, as far as the length spacing and the width spacing. They're like 330 millimeters on width. Of course, the length will vary depending on how you end up mounting them. So a pretty good package, I think, so far. So what we'll do next is, yeah, start looking at some of the adjustments that are available on these pedals. Now we're going to go over some of the adjustments for these pedals. And we're going to start with the brake pedal because it has the same adjustments as far as the front section of these levers as the throttle and the clutch over here. So it's all the same. So we'll use the brake pedal for the basic adjustments as far as what we get to through this. Now there'll be some, uh, I think there's one or two adjustments different on the clutch and the throttle for the mechanisms for the, you know, for the, as far as you're pushing the clutch and things like that. But we'll do those individually. First off, what I'm going to do is pull these pedal face off and pull these screws out. These are four mil, by the way, for your wrench, your hex wrench. And that they include that hex wrench, as you guys saw, in the kit. But I'm using my own because they're a little bit easier to use. I'll go ahead and pull the top one out. I always pull the bottom out first to keep the from flopping around on me. Because if you take the top out and then the bottom one, it can rotate on you and cause problems, scratch things up. All right, so we have some nice flathead screws here. Again, I believe these are stainless steel. They pass the magnet test as that anyway. And of course, they fit in these nice counter sunk holes that are in the pedals. And those are our adjustment holes. We don't use any of these holes for adjustments. And if you look closely, you can see that this anodization, this is a high quality anodization, I think, on this because I've been using this underfoot for a bit now and I don't see any wear on this at all. So I know there's different levels of anodization you can get in the higher levels cost more money, obviously. So I'm imagine this is, is done on one of the higher levels. All right, so nice wear there. <laughs> so this is what we're looking for on the front here. And that is the plate that's gonna let us adjust where this face will go. As you can see, we have three up and three across. And I can just move over one or come to, if I'm in the middle to begin with, I can go over one or I can come back over this side for one. And I can go down one or I can go up one like that. So I think that's a pretty good range of adjustment to get where you want to be. Even for my, when I was actually driving this in heel and toe, I didn't even do it to the side because the, uh, the accelerator pedal has this nice piece sticking out to where it's easy to rotate your foot around and catch that and for your heel and toe shifting and tapping the throttle. So, and you'll see that in the driving segment. But plenty of adjustment there. Now this plate itself is a separate plate, all right? It bolts to this adjuster here. Turn this around so you can see it. This is the adjustment piece here and it has slots in it, all right? And you can actually take this piece off of the adjuster plate so it's all assembled, but I'm not gonna do all that, we don't need to but we will see how we can adjust the angle of these pedal faces. And it's a very simple thing to do here. We have a M6 cap bolts on this side and acorns on the side over here. So my M6s are hanging over here and there's the acorn nuts. All right, and they do give us some good wrenches, so I'm gonna use those to get this done. It's a 10 millimeter, nice chrome plated deal. And I'm also going to use a five mil hex to do that with. So I'm going to go down here and the whole idea is adjust the angle obviously of the face of this pedal. And I'm going to go down and just grab this with my 10 mil 
in the five mil and we just loosen it up a little. We don't want to, don't need to take them all the way out. Let me get on the top here and easier to get to. Like that. And grab the bottom one. Like that. You can see it fell forward when I did that. We can move this in and out pretty freely. Slide this around. So yeah, lots of range there as far as the angle that we want to get on the pedal. And I was able to dial in exactly what I needed, so I didn't have any issues with that. So I like that they do that, give you plenty of angle. To, and it kind of a, has a bow in it or a angle in the actual slots themselves. You see that angle in there? Kind of It kind of slopes down like this. So that lets us, around a little more there, that lets us, it, it come up and maintain the angle you need to. And you can even go like an angle like this if you wanted to. <laughs> so if you had an F1 setup, you would have it see, sitting straight up like that, so you could get it to that. And it doesn't look like it's straight up in the camera because of the angle I have, but yeah, that's straight up and down. So you, again, you can go to just about any position you want to a super laid back to that, right? I mean, we can just lay this puppy back pretty far. <laughs> so, and again, that's for a, a relaxed GT, I would call, as far as position. So let me snug this back up relatively close to where I had it before, so I can get use it again and I'll just come in and tighten it up real quick because if I don't I will forget this and then I'll try to put the the face back on the pedal face and it won't go on right <laughs> it'll fall off and then I'll be all embarrassed because I didn't tighten them up all right so let's go ahead and tighten those up again five mil ten mil and we're done now what we're gonna do is take a look at this adjustment for the, the break back here, right? So we've covered the adjustment that's pretty much the same, or is the same, not pretty much, all the way across here. Now there is one more adjustment before I get to the break. I wanna show you here. And this is, at the top of this lever, there's a slot in here. See the slot? Okay, so the higher you raise this bolt into that slot right there, the more resistance you're gonna get. So if you lower it, you're gonna get less resistance. So if you see right here, I have this brake pedal set at the highest resistance, and I have the stiffest spring in there also. And I can actually preload that spring. And we'll talk about that right now. This is a little piece here. You see how there's two pieces here? There's a big collar, and there's a little plastic piece in here. That plastic piece actually has a big nut in it. I don't know how you're gonna see this, how well you guys could see that, but. You see that tip sticking out right here on this side? That's a big nut in there, and it's going to go up and down on the threads that's on this piston rod here. You know, it'll make more sense once I do it. So what I'm going to do is just turn this sideways a little bit so you guys can see what I'm doing. I'm going to hold this top piece, even though I don't have to because it's not going anywhere because it's locked into this rod end. But I'm just going to hold it and then kind of get in here. Actually, I'm going to do it this way so you can see what I'm doing. And I'm turning it, and if you're looking this way, I'm going to be turning it clockwise. And as I do that, you'll start to see some threads being exposed down there on the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and thread this up. And what that is doing is compressing the spring that's inside this housing. And that gives me a preload adjustment. So it's a lot harder when I start the pedal, when I pull it down and start to pull on it, it is much stiffer. So that gives me a preload, which makes it more force to push the pedal. And I had mine up pretty, pretty good, I think, with the other, because I like a stiffer pedal. I've been doing this a long time and I kind of prefer a stiffer one. But yeah, this is really stiffens it up when you do that. You can see the exposed threads there now. So that's a preload adjustment. I'm going to go ahead, because I want to take this off and show you guys some stuff, I'm going to go ahead and undo that preload real quick. Better if I do it in my right hand. I know you can't see it, but you know what I'm doing. All right. Almost there. There we go. All right. So now. That's the, the preload adjustment. We can change the spring. Remember, if you saw the closer look, we have this spring here. It's a thin spring. And this is the one I took out. This is the one that originally comes in this housing piece here. So to get this off, there's two couple things we have to do. We have to take the rod end off of the aluminum part of the lever for our pedal. And this is an M8 smooth shanked bolt. And this is a 13 mil over there. And again, I'm going to use the 13 mil that came in the actual toolkit. This is a good wrench. And I'm gonna use my five mil over here. 
Now, there's a couple things about this when you're doing it that you want to pay attention to. First off, I'll go ahead and start to loosen it. Easy enough. There we go. Like that. And once this is loose, this acorn nut on the side is going to be really loose. They can just spin that right off. But there is a washer there that you want to pay attention to. You don't want to lose the washer. I'm going to go ahead and take this off. And you can see there's our little acorn nut. I can get this thing to focus. You can do it. There you go. All right. Now we have a washer over here. I'm going to see if I can get that off without. It doesn't look like it. But you know, because of this flat metal plate down here, if you do drop a washer, it's probably not going to go anywhere on you. But I think I got it off now. There it is. All right. So we got a washer and an acorn nut on that side. So we want to make sure that we don't lose any of this stuff. Because trying to put it back on is going to be a bit of a pain if you don't have it. Now we have this bolt sticking out here. Now this bolt is a shanked bolt. And you'll see that when I take it out, what I mean by that. So it has a smooth part that's passing through the actual rod end up here. So I'm going to pull down on this housing to take pressure off of this. Because right now that spring is pushing against this bolt in the slot in there. So as I take some tension off of that, it's going to allow me to pull the bolt out in a controlled manner. <laughs> because there's another washer in here. I don't know if you guys can see that, but there's actually a washer in between the rod end and our plate over here. Okay, So you want to be mindful of that. It's probably going to drop on me, but that's okay. You know, It's going to hit the aluminum down here. It should be fine. So I'm going to go ahead and put a little pressure downward with this hand on the brake, and that should let me pull that out. See how it's coming out now? I'm going to pull it out just far enough. Hopefully I can still catch that washer and clear the lever. That's the trick. There it is. Can you do it? And there it is. Aha. So we still have our washer. Didn't fall off. Not yet anyway. There we go. And that just, again, goes up against. Let me go ahead and tilt this back. Pull this bolt out. Goes against the inside. So you want to remember how this goes together. All right. So you got to make sure that you put that washer back on there. All right. So let's put my washer over here. Now this is the shank bolt I'm talking about. That's what it looks like. See, that's nice and smooth around that part so that this will rotate inside of the ball, of the ball end or rod end. And yeah, very nicely done. And a little washer there to go on this side of our ball that's inside of the rod. Now, easy enough so far, right? Okay, so I want to change the spring, all right? Back to my light. Now, I really don't want to do that, but if you wanted to do that, that's what you do. Now, also... I'm surprised this didn't fall because usually this will just fall right down like that, right? As, as I'm trying to put this on, let me spin this around this way to see a little bit better. There we go. So yeah, the, the lever didn't fall like it usually does. And then it, it lands on your box, black box here. It's a good thing we have a, the box to catch it. But I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is go a little step further here, which you don't need to do to change your spring. I'm going to pull this out because I want you guys to see this, how this lever is attached down here on the bottom. All right. There's a little pinching mechanism going here. See that slot right down there? That's actually pinched down by these bolts. So it holds a rod in here. It's a steel shank or rod in there. And I'm going to loosen that up enough to get that out. And let's see how these things are rotating. This, again, is a 5 mil. And I think I pre-loosened these a little bit. Yeah, okay. And I'll go ahead and get this one loose. Spin them so they're good and free, not binding on anything. And that's relieving the pressure in our slots down here. All right. So now I should be able to get this pist this little thing to move. And there it goes. See that? See it coming out? Awesome. Let me get this centered. There we go. So now I can should just be able to take some pressure off this pedal. I'm going to get my brake out of the way again like this. And then just go ahead and pull the rod all the way out. Once I get it further out or far enough out, I can just take my fingers here and grab it, kind of twist it as I'm pulling it out and taking, kind of wiggling the pedal a little bit because there's a nice tight fit in here, which it should be. There we go. And there's the lever. And here's the pin that everything rotates on. And you can take these out every once in a while and lube them up if you want, if, if you ever get a squeak or anything. So this is a very, the reason I'm showing you this, it's very easy to do maintenance on this pedal set. Of course, when it's on your rig, it's a little bit tighter, obviously, but yeah, very easy to do. So a nice steel rod there. Solid steel. <laughs> nice unit. Nice little stand you up there. And the pedal itself on the bottom, 
it has the, like this this sticky side tape going one way, but Teflon on the other. See how that works? That's the sound deadener for the pedal. So this keeps it quiet when it's coming down, and we, we hit the brake pedal, and then it slaps back up forward like that and bottoms out against this. So that keeps things quiet. And that's why you don't hear much noise when I'm using these when you see me in the driving segment. And this gives us a better look also at those slots on how we can adjust that pedal face angle. And of course the slot for adjusting the tension or how much effort it takes us to push the pedal. And it also lets me show you in better detail when I was talking about this being a separate piece right here. This piece is separate from this piece. You can see the little seam in here. Yeah. So that's how easy it comes apart for maintenance and things. Or if I wanted to move the pedal over, I don't have to assemble it this much, but if I wanted to move the brake pedal over to here, or rather, yeah, the brake pedal over to here, I'd have to take the clutch pedal off, though, to make it a two-pedal type of setup or a GT or F1 type setup. So there we have the pedals. Nice bushings in there, by the way. You guys will look at that. Got some lube in there. Nice. Okay. We'll just leave that aside for now. Give me a better look or give us a better look at what's going on with the brake. So let's spin this back around. What's the best way to do this? Get my lever out of the way so I don't knock it off the table. I guess, let's see. I don't like that either. Let's try this way. Here we go. All right, so here's our brake. You know what I'm going to do? I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to pull this, uh, is that a four? Yeah, it's a four. I'm going to pull this pedal face off, I think. <laughs> Let me get a, a proper wrench to do that with. See, that's the problem with those handled wrenches like that. They don't give you the leverage that the L's do when it comes to turning these bolts. Now, of course, that I'm gone this far, it's very easy to take it off. But I'm going to take that off so we can get a better look at it. You can always put it back on. And you can see what this one looks like, which will be identical to the brake. But a little bit longer, right? So the brake is this one. That was a little bit longer, obviously, because we have the bolts spaced out on this one. And again, you can see the front on this. I don't see any scarring, scuffing. Very nice. Good finish on this. Good durable finish. Uh, we can see a lot better now, I think. I need to get this plastic piece off to access the spring. In fact, we can see the spring a little bit. I can get this close enough. It's already in there. See it down in here? So I want to get this off. Now, the only way to do that is we have to pull the rod end off of this cap. So you're going to need a 17 mil for this. Now, this is not something that comes with your kit, so you will have to have a 17 millimeter wrench to do this because that's how it fits around the rod end. See how that fits? And I'm going to hold the plastic cup here as I turn it and try to unlock it. And there it goes. All right. Now we've got it loose, and we spin it off just like you spin anything else off. There we go. And we get a closer look at the rod end this way. Has a nice bronze bushing in there. It'll focus. There it is. Of course, this ball moves around inside and gives us the rod effect. Very cool. And of course, it's, like I said, it's got that smooth finish to it. That there's the chrome finish instead of that. There's, there's these matte finishes on these cheaper ones you get. They don't even bother polishing it out a little bit. So we'll set that aside. Now the cap should come off very easily. There we go. And it's just a plastic cap. There is a, I don't know how well you can see it. There it is. You can see it. There's a nut that fits down in there, and you can see it sitting on the threaded rod piece over here. It fits in there and allows me to hold it like I did and take that rod in and get it loose. Nice design. And here's the spring. And this is the heavy spring. Okay. And again, this is our light spring. You can probably tell. Well, that's showing up, but yeah, you can see the heavy spring is definitely thicker than the other one. If I can get this thing to focus, I got it on close up mode, so sometimes it doesn't focus very well. That should do it right there. Okay, I'm keeping the heavy one in. The light one was too light for me. And I wanted to take a chance to show you uh, an opportunity, rather, to show you what I was talking about that nut. You know, when we're doing the adjustment for the tension or preload adjustment here, there's that big nut sitting down on the bottom there. And we can turn that, right, like that. And inside of this plastic, like the other piece of plastic, there is that 
shape cut into it and this injection molded piece that that nut fits in. So when I'm turning this, I'm turning the nut essentially. And it looks nice because you don't see all this. Of course, some people might like to see that. I wouldn't really mind seeing it, but yeah, it's just a beauty cover, if you will, but also functions as a knob or collar, if you will, to let us turn that around. That's all there is to it as far as adjusting the brake pedal. And what we'll do next is obviously I'm going to put this all back together, right? And then we'll come back and look at what adjustments are available besides what we've already covered on the brake pedal to the clutch and over there, over here on the throttle rather, and over here on the clutch. So let's take a look at the throttle throw adjustment. Right now, I have it at pretty much its longest throw, which I was using when I was racing with this. And I think there's enough throw there, plenty really, to modulate the throttle where I needed to. I never had a problem or felt like I needed more reach. But there is just a hair more reach here, but I'll show you what I mean by that in a minute. But it's a very simple thing to adjust this throttle as far as the throw goes. And this collar here, this metal piece here, is actually threaded inside and it's riding on the threads at the end of this pneumatic cylinder. And we have to loosen this collar up so we can move this and it's just a stop at the end of the day. That's all it does. And we're going to do that now. Now they do provide a three millimeter wrench for this little nut down here. Or not nut, but that's actually a bolt. And I'm going to go in with my wrench and loosen that up. Of course, that'll be counterclockwise. If I remember my directions properly. It doesn't take much to loosen it to where it'll spin. See right there? It's already doing it. And I'm going to spin this up in a counterclockwise if I'm looking from the front to the back of the pedals. And you can see the threads in there. Just like we had on the brake over here when I was adjusting the preload on the brake when we saw that when we took that apart. So same thing. Of course, this would be a very short pedal throw and nobody would ever want that, I don't suppose. So yeah, I had it at the longest one. So very easy to adjust. We have a rubber grommet. You see this black piece in here. And of course, that keeps things nice and quiet. So we don't have this rod in metal hitting the metal of the collar like that. And I've spun it all the way down. I think that's it right there. Yeah. Now there is a little bit left here. You can actually go this high. But when I use the pedal, I tell you, I, I couldn't tell the difference from here to here. I mean, it's probably a millimeter, maybe two. But underfoot, when you're using it in driving a car, it really is, yeah, I wouldn't think that you would notice the difference. Maybe somebody could. But I'm going to leave it there. Plus, I think it looks a little better hanging down, but then that's just totally an aesthetic thing. And we'll go ahead and tighten this back up, just like we loosened it. Get my little three mil in there. I can find the right spot. And, yeah, tighten her up. There we go. And, again, it doesn't take much torque to tighten this up to it won't spin. In fact, it's, it's hard to spin right now at that point right there. I just tighten her up, and we're done, and there you go. So that is the throttle adjustment, the only throttle adjustment we have besides, again, the front parts that we've already done, again, at the brake pedal. There's no sense in going on this every time I, <laughs> I look at one of these pedals adjustments. So, yeah, we'll get to the clutch next. Now we're going to do the adjustments on the clutch. And there's really only a couple here to do. Actually, there's only one that I haven't covered yet. But we're going to take a look inside this clutch mechanism, too, because I know you guys want to see what's going on in here. <laughs> and... If you look back here on the bracket in the back of this clutch, and this is the way it comes default from the factory, you'll see that it has a, an angle on the front and it's straight down on the back. It's a 90 degree angle to the plate on the back. And at the front, it probably looks like 85, maybe 80 max. So that kind of leans this point, this pivot point back towards the rear of the brakes of this pedal set. And we can actually take this part or off. Let me show you a shot of it there. We have two bolts in here. You take those bolts out, and you can see the two holes on the other side. We simply rotate the bracket 180 degrees, bolt it back down, and then we'll have something that looks like this over here on the throttle. Because from the throttle, from the factory, you can see that the front has the straight 90 degree angle, and the back has that sloping angle. Although we can't do this to the throttle, right? Because we have another way to shorten the stroke on the throttle we just saw. So no need to do it there. But you can if you want to suppose an experiment. So yeah, pretty simple what we're doing there, just taking that bracket off. And of course, to do that, we would have to pull this piece out, right? get it loose, and then be able to put it back in. No big deal there. So yeah, very simple adjustment to make there. And it will shorten, if we flip it around, it's going to shorten it to like 2.5 centimeters versus I think it's 4.5 or something like that in the, in the manual. Well, it's actually, it's not in the manual. It's in the PDF. But yeah, 
I'm showing you guys a shot of that anyway so you can see it. But yeah, that adjusts how far this clutch is going to move. And I left it at stock because I kind of like a long travel, especially when I'm doing healing tool. I like to slap it and get some movement out of it. Uh, it depends on what you want, though. And it's nice that you do have that adjustment. Now, I'm going to take a quick look at this brake pedal, or not brake pedal, but clutch pedal assembly. All right, so I'm going to get my close-up camera over here. And to do that, I'm going to have to pull this rod in loose, just like we did on the brake, if you guys watched that part. And that is a 5 mil and a 13 mil wrench to get that out. I'm going to do that right now, real quick here, like that. And that's also how we adjust up and down for the force that we have on the clutch pedal. Of course, I always had it at the top. And I'm going to pull this little nut off here, this acorn nut and washer. There's our acorn nut and washer. If I can get a focus here, camera. There we go. It's slow when I'm on close up on the focus. And then I'm going to pull this bolt out. And just like on the brake bolt, there's a washer in here. I think you guys can see that. And I'm going to push backwards on the spring tension to get it loose as I'm pulling it out so I can maintain control a little bit anyway. <laughs> as I pull it out, I'm going to try to keep that washer on there as I pull it up. Of course, if it fell out, it really would make a big difference, but there it is. Still, you can do it. As you saw on the brakes, it does the same way. So we'll pull that out. And it's the same deal as the brake. It has that smooth shank on this bolt for the pivot point. And of course, we have that washer that goes on the other side. We'll set those aside for now. So now I have my rod in loose, and of course, my pedal slapped down there. <laughs> so now, to get this off, I have to get a 17 mil wrench on the end of the rod end, or not the end of the rod end, but where that rod end has little slots on it, made just for that. So let me grab my 17 mil, and I'm kind of kind of hold the plastic housing while I'm doing this. It shouldn't be that tight, at least I hope it's not, but I'm, I want to make sure that I'm not twisting this with the wrench when I'm doing it. So I'm kind of countering it with my hand. There we go. So yeah, it wasn't that bad. So we'll go ahead and put our wrench back up. Now we can take our rod end off. Oop, came off pretty quick. You can see some threads sticking out down here. And again, it's the same rod end that we saw on the brake with a nice bushing in it. Again, these are these are nice parts on this kit here. They didn't skimp really. And there's very nice movement here on this ball. So I'm going to pull this cover off. I think I'm going to pull it off. Yeah, the whole thing just comes off very carefully. And, yeah, okay, so there, the, the spring, there is no spring in here. I thought there might be a spring in here, but there is no spring, as you can see. Let's see if I can get a better picture of it here. Slide this around so you guys can see what's going on here. So the spring action is from this piston being pushed into the pneumatic cylinder. So that's our spring action. So that air pressure in there, it's sealed, so the air is pushing back against us. There might be a spring in here, too. I'm not sure. I have to pull it completely apart to find out. But there you go. That's the spring action we're getting for the pushback. Now, you notice this piece here. This is a magnet. Right there. Okay, so we can stick something to it if we wanted to. <laughs> it's kind of a neat design here, actually, what they came up with. Inside of this plastic, I hope my light covers this well. I think you can see it good enough. There's another magnet, same, same cylinder design. But there's these rubber pads on it, and that's what why it's quiet. And you don't hear the magnets snapping together when we're actually using this clutch pedal. And this is a guide rod here. So it guides through this plastic piece here so it's nice and smooth when we're pushing it. So it's pretty clever, I think, the way they did this. Of course, we have a, a metal plate that everything's attached to to reinforce it so that we can support our bolts in the back here. And this bolt is holding the magnet on, and this bolt is holding that guide rod. So, yeah. And, of course, they had this injection molding housing going around it. So you know they, they designed this from ground up, how they wanted this to work. And so that's why when you push the pedal, it, when the magnets get close together, they snap together, right? Of course, we have that rubber pad in, in this piece, so it doesn't make any noise. But it feels like you're pushing through the spring elements on the pressure plate as we lift that pressure plate off of the clutch, right, that's on the flywheel. So that's how we do this. Right? So, pretty neat the way this is configured, I think. I don't know what you guys think. Well done, I think. Again, when you're in the heat of battle with heel and toe, this kind of stuff, yeah, I don't really notice it anymore once I'm slapping the clutch pedal going through the gears up or down. So, it's just one of those things that you can feel by hand and by your foot when you have it mounted. But at the end of the day, yeah, 
I think that you really won't notice this once you're using it in the heat of battle. So let's take a look inside of this controller box and see what's going on. But before I do that, I wanted to remove the brake pedal assembly, as you can see here, so that we have a better look at it. And it was very easy just to actually bolt out the back of the back bracket here, a couple of spacers centering it. It has the long, smooth shank on the bolt for pivot purposes, as the ones on the rod ends also have. And these are the spacers that came off of them. Very easy to do. All right, so what I'm going to do first is tilt this up and get in my close-up camera here. And we're going to plug it in and watch the initialization sequence. Very cool. It's got these LEDs that show you what's going on. There we go. Looks like we got all green and blue now. And you did see a temporary flash of the warning light down here. But it went away, which is a good thing. So we have a power light. We have the any OK, which means the startup process went smoothly. And then we have throttle, brake, clutch, and brake regulator. It's kind of neat that we can see what's going on just from the front of the panel when we plug it in or when you start your computer up. So, And also, when we take a quick glance at it, if we're having a problem, we can see if there's anything going on with the lights indicating that. So I think that's pretty cool that they did that. All right, so let's go ahead and take this top off. Two bolts. Before we do that, though, we're going to unplug the USB. <laughs> we'll make sure we don't have any power going to it. And there's two bolts. We don't have to do all four bolts here to get this top off and take a peek inside and see what's going on. Have some very long M4 stainless steel bolts here, socket head cap units. You see that? And again, that's an M3, not an M3, but a three millimeter hex head M4 screw. Got a little shank on it there. Okay. I'm going to pull the cover up. I'm going to gently kind of wiggle it back and forth as I'm doing that. There it goes. And we'll get a closer look at it over here. And again, you can see there's a writing on it. And what's neat is they have a couple of features here that are unique. These pieces here actually come down from the cover and slide into some slots that are in the bottom piece down here and act as cable gables. You can see a little circular piece that's cut into each one of those. And there's a cable zip tie on the cable also that keeps it from going past that. Kind of cool design. And they also have little ports here for the LEDs lights to get through. I think you can see through that if I can get it lined up right. Hard for me to tell on my monitor here. Anyway, yeah, there you go. You see some light through there. And we have another one up here for the power light. Very nice design here. And we've got some standoffs even that press down onto the other housing. And I'll show you why those are there, along with some other things, as we tilt this back up. Give up my close-up view here. And yeah, you can see that we've got these little pins here that the board, the circuit board, is sitting on. And those standoffs, when you bolt it down, push down on around the top of those pins. So they fit over those and keep tension on the circuit board so it doesn't go anywhere. Very cool design. Now, we have our USB-C plug. As we know, this uses a USB-C, which is very nice. We have some nice terminal blocks here where we're plugging in our wires. And the wires do are pre-soldered or pre-tinned, if you will, when we put them in, which makes it nice and neat. This is a proprietary board developed for... Sim Racing Pro. So again, very neat layout here. Again, keeping with the theme, or the general theme, of this pedal set. It's just very clean everywhere you look. The setup is well thought out here. All right, so yeah, there's not much else to show you here as far as the look inside, so we'll just get to the next segment. So I'm going to go over the SRP app here that sets the calibration for the pedals. It's a very simple application. I should be able to go through this pretty quickly. First thing you want to do is, before you hit up here on Sport Basic Settings, you want to make sure that your feet are not on the pedals, because when it first starts, it calibrates the pedals at their minimums, and you don't want your feet resting on them for that. So I'm going to go ahead and just click on that, and you can see it comes up to this screen right here, where we can calibrate, save settings, or go back. Right, I'm going to calibrate. So I'm going to click on Calibrate, and the little screen comes up, very simple. You press your throttle down first, and you hold it, and you have to hold it while you press next. So I'm going to do that. And you can see it goes over to the brake pedal. So I'm going to do the same thing on the brake pedal. Push it with as much force as I want to use in game. I'm not trying to push it all the way to the end if it takes more force than I want to use. So I'm just going to use as much force that I think I'll be using in the game under my 
extreme braking conditions are my most extreme braking conditions. So I'm going to do that and then I'm going to click next. And the only thing left is a clutch. So I'll press that down, hold it down and hit next. All right. So then it says I've calibrated the pedals. So I'm going to say save. And it'll take me to this screen here. Now this is where you can do a couple of things. You can adjust your top and bottom dead zones. So if I had a, some brake pedal showing, let's say if I had the brake pedal showing a little bit, but my foot was off of it, I could raise the dead zone so that that little bar here, you see this is kind of a gold colored bar. If I hold it there and I'm simulating the pedal is on all the time, I can go up and raise this piece here, right? And now you can see, you don't see the pedal lever anymore unless I push it further. So now there's nothing there until I'm pressing on the pedal, the brake pedal, and as, once I get to that dead zone end point, you'll see that line come up, and there it is. And then I can go through the rest of the stroke. Now you can see it's limited to 65. You can raise that too, apparently, to 75 from what I see here. So I'm not sure what the F1 and F2 functions are for. If I click on those, it get, maybe that's buttons. Okay, I can calibrate with these buttons maybe. That's what they're talking about. Okay, so I'll say F1 and F2. Anyway, so that's it as far as what adjustments you can do here. Not a whole lot. And then once I've done what I want to do, I would save the settings. But before I do that, I'm going to lower my dead zone back. And you have to click it, click it, click it. Keep clicking it until it goes down. You can't highlight the, the numbers or anything. So you just have to keep clicking in the minus or plus, depending on what direction you want to go in. So now I'm just going to save the settings. I'm done. And that's it. You've calibrated your pedals in the SRP My Setup application. So the SRP pedals are now mounted. And we'll go around here to the other side of my pedal tray. And I use some M6 socket head cap bolts here. And because of the way the profiles that connect these two sides, over here and over there, run the way they run and, and the way the corner brackets I use are mount them, I couldn't use two of these slots. I ended up using, having to use a hole back here, one of these countersunk holes. See, the, that socket head cap is not meant for a countersunk hole, but it works. That's the important part. It's very tight. This whole assembly is very tightly attached now. It would be better, of course, if I had a flathead M6 that was the right length that would go in there. But I don't, so that's how we ended up mounting it. But it's very secure, very stiff, no problems. And it's just one of those things that if I was going to run this pedal set as my main set, I would probably order some flathead bolts that were the right length that I needed. But anyway... Now that it's nice and secure, we can go ahead and get in and start doing some driving and doing some heel-toe pedal work and put these pedals under some pressure and see how they respond. So we're in iRacing at Sebring in the Lotus 79, doing some heel and toe shifting. And this is a great way to put some pressure on the pedals and see how they respond. So we'll talk about the clutch pedal first. The plastic housing there, is I was kind of looking at that thinking that, you know, if I'm slapping this around and I'm, I'm getting off angle on the pedal with the sole of my foot, like you can see right here, that's putting some side load as I'm slapping the pedal when that happens. And I was wondering if that housing would, would bend or flex at all and maybe hang up on that metal plate on the back that it's sliding over. But they did a good job with the design here, apparently, because that never happened. The guide rod is big enough, thick enough to keep everything straight, even with some side load pressure on it that you'll see from time to time when you're, if you're watching what's going on with my feet here. So it did a good job there, never hung up. As far as the sensation of pressing through a pressure plate, uh, that goes away pretty quick when you're in this kind of driving mode and heel and toe. You're just stabbing at the pedal at this point. And I'm, I'm not feeling anything except the pedal bottoming out and, and obviously releasing. And that's all that's really important. The most important thing is your timing here to get your shifts correct. Now, so, I really have no complaints about the clutch pedal. Uh, even clutch pedals that have the same kind of element in it, be it a different design, how they implement it, uh, yeah, that all goes away anyway, too. So I really don't feel that when I'm doing this kind of shifting. Now, the brake pedal. I did do some adjustments on this to get it to, dialed in where I want, and that's completely subjective, obviously. Here, I only have a few turns of preload on it, but I ended up going about maybe a third way up at the end of my sessions is where I liked it so that I'd get the travel that I want and the feel of the, the pushback from the spring that I wanted to be consistent with my braking. And of course, like I said, everybody's gonna be a little different here. So it's very subjective what you're gonna want. 
But yeah, the brake pedal itself, I was able to get that dialed in. And we have a pressure-based brake pedal here, which is something that I think is important for any set of good pedals. If you're going to be driving consistently, be it this pneumatic system based on air, or you have a hydraulic system, or you have a load cell system, a pressure-based brake pedal is very important, I think. And it did a good job here once I got it dialed down to where I could consistently feel what it was doing underfoot. In heavy brake zones like here, I was able to push the front tire's grips to the very edge and then let off and go into my trail brake as I was doing my turn in for the turn or the corner. And everything worked fine. I was able to be very consistent with that once I got used to it. Again, any new brake pedal, it takes a, a few laps at least, maybe even a, in an hour or so, to really get it dialed into where you, you like it and you're consistent with it. But again, that's going to be a personal thing. And where you would end up with something like this, who knows? Now, the throttle. Plenty of throw here, I think. I was able to modulate this car very well with the amount of throw that I had in this throttle pedal. It's a very tricky car to drive because it's very light and very powerful. And if you're in a low gear coming around a corner and, and you don't accelerate properly, it will definitely snap around on you pretty quickly. And that's one of the reasons why I like driving this car. It's, it's a challenge. And it did a good job here. I didn't have any problems not having enough resolution or not having enough throw to get it done. And even though I might like just a little bit more throw in it, but again, that's a personal thing. It did get the job done, so I really can't complain about that. And as far as the durability of everything, nothing ever got hung up as far as, you know, seizing up on the, the pivot points. Everything operated smoothly. And I really can't find anything to really ding these pedals on as far as driving like this. They survived well. The face pedal, the pedal faces rather, they really reacted well. I mean, I'm using rubber shoes here, but still, there was not a scratch on these things after I was doing my heel and toe shifting. And, and I think I said that when I was doing some of the closer look and adjustment segment, you might have seen a closer look at it. So they got some really good anodization on it. I thought I was going to rub some of this off, but no, it, it survived pretty well after, you know, a few hours of me doing this kind of stuff to them. So. Uh, you know, I can't complain about that either. So they just get the job done at the end of the day. They do a pretty good job. I mean, I would be happy with this set of pedals, I think. I think I could use these on a daily basis and not be disappointed. But again, that's a very personal thing. And yeah, so anyway, we'll just go ahead and get to the final thought. Final thoughts on the SRP GT Edition pedal set from the guys at Sim Racing Pro. The first impression I got when removing this set from the box was just how clean the layout looked. Even with all the cables connected, the pedals are mounted to a solid 10mm thick base plate that provides a nice stiff feel when using the pedals. The front pedal faces have a durable finish to them that showed no signs of wear after a few hours of some very spirited heel and toe driving. The pedal faces have a good adjustment range on the lever faces. The pedals can be moved sideways, but only to a pre-drilled and tapped position. It would also be easy to remove the clutch pedal and position the brake pedal in its place. The overall build quality is very good. There is high quality, heavy duty hardware fasteners throughout this assembly, including thick steel pins and bronze bushings in the front pivot points. The GT Edition pedals use stainless steel sleeve pneumatic cylinders to provide resistance and damping effects. There are also plenty of adjustments available on this set to allow the user to dial in their preferred pedal feel. Sim Racing Pro uses a circuit board of their own design, which has a very neat layout. There is a nice LED light feature on this board that will be useful to find a problem should one arise. I used my usual heel and toe driving technique to give the pedals a good workout. If a pedal set has any short-term weaknesses, this will usually make them noticeable, but I found no issues here as I hammered away on them. I was able to find a suitable setting on the brake pedal to allow me to go deep into the brake zones consistently and trail brake the way I normally do. The throttle has enough throw to permit smooth modulation on tricky corner exit points. The clutch does have an interesting magnetic solution employed that gives you a sense of pushing through the clutch pressure plate spring, although at speed, 
the sensation was really not noticeable, as usually happens when you're using a heel and toe technique. Overall, I could not find anything in this SRP GT Edition set that would keep me from recommending them as a pedal set that deserves a look if you're looking for these kind of pedals. A solid set of pedals with a very clean look to them. I'm Barry Rowland. Thanks again for watching the Sim Racing Garage channel. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And if you would like to help support what I do here at the SRG, visit my website at simracinggarage.com.